What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about a function contained in the tool JHS Power Bar and how you can use it in your models. Before we get started I want to thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Brian Hawkins, Jody Kennedy, Matt Ryan, Sal Messina, BC Holmes, Jeffrey Johnson, and YCSWYD. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. Um, one of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week in these videos. So this week, my patrons voted, and they voted for a new JHS Power Bar ext uh, tool extension. So this week, I'm going to talk about InnerAuth Upright Extruder. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, uh, vote on the extension that we cover every week, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this tool is a tool contained in JHS Power Bar, which I will link to in the notes down below. JHS Power Bar is basically a uh, collection of some of the best extensions from some of the best extension authors. So you have uh, like Tiggs in here, and um, Christina Inneroth is in here. There's multiple different people in here that create great extensions, and this is kind of a collection of some of the best ones. And in this case, I want to focus specifically on the Upright Extruder from Inneroth. And so Christina Inneroth, as a lot of you know, probably probably has the most extensions of any developer in the SketchUp extension warehouse. Um, well, this one, what it's designed to do is if you've ever worked with kind of curves like this one, like anything that curves and twist it, that curves and twists inside a SketchUp, if you've ever tried to use the follow me tool to extrude something along that, you notice that once you start curving and twisting, you start getting really weird results. Like for example, if you have this shape that you want to keep upright all the way, you can see how it does this kind of weird twisting curving thing where it's upside down by the next, the next iteration. And so you can see how that isn't really helpful if you have a shape that you need to keep upright. So like for handrails or something like that. And uh, so what this extension does is it allows you to select a path as well as a face and then you just click on the button for the upright extruder. What the upright extruder does is this will extrude this shape along this curve while keeping it upright. So you can see how at the very top of this, this has maintained its orientation facing upward. So this is a great tool for something like this. It's also good for some other applications like handrails, which we'll talk about in a second. So um, another great example is if you've ever tried to create like a screw type shape or something like that in SketchUp where you've got like a point that runs along this edge, you can see how if I select this and then run the follow me tool, you start getting this weird twist again. So the orientation gets all messed up. And if you were to come through and then extrude this shape up through the middle of this, you can see how it doesn't really make any sense. It's just not a very good shape. It's not very helpful. However, if you were to do the same thing with Inroth's upright extruder, so all I have is just a triangle here. So if I select this, this path right here and then do a shift click and click on this uh, shape, and then I run the extruder. So if I click on upright extruder with these selected, that's gonna extrude this along this path, but you can see how it maintains that orientation. So what you have is you have this same look all the way through. And so now if I was to push pull this up, you can see how this continues all the way along this and it actually looks really good. So it allows you to create a really great shape. And so another application for something like this is something like handrails. So let's say you have a stair kind of like this one and you've got a handrail shape that you want to extrude along this path. Well, in this case, if I click on this path and then I use the follow me tool, the problem with this is this will follow this path and it'll extrude along it, but by the time you get to the top, you can see how you have kind of a twist in here. And the twist means that your handrail doesn't look the way that it needs to look. But with Upright Extruder, you can select these and you can run it and it'll extrude this and this will maintain that upward, um, that upward orientation. However, there is something you might notice with this is while this maintains its uh, orientation, you can see how a lot of these faces aren't getting created the way that they should. Instead of going in and trying to fix that, what, what I've found is this has to do with the way that SketchUp creates faces and kind of smaller curves. So you'll notice you start having these issues along these smaller curves in here, along these smaller faces. It just doesn't create the faces in there. And I found a way around that is is if you take your shape like this one, if you just take the whole thing 
And again, this has to do with SketchUp's limitations of size of faces. If you take this and just select the whole thing and scale it up like a factor of 10, and then you come in here and you run this, you'll notice that this creates these nice smooth faces. So you could do that for both of these handrails. So you've got these nice handrails that follow along this path and they follow this orientation. And then you can just take the whole thing and just scale it down by a factor of like 0.1. And you can bring this back down in here. So if you start running into face creation issues with this extension, just scale it up create the object and then scale it back down and you shouldn't have problems anymore. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you have some cool uses for this? Have you used this tool before? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.